I'll start. Go ahead. We talk Al Gratin. Leonese. Cash Browns. Not so. Fries. <laughs> Cottage. Wedge, wedges. Twice baked. Sweet potato fries. Tater tots. <laughs> Dutch boys. Baker potatoes. Uh, 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 hash browns. I said hash browns. <laughs> oh, I lose. <laughs> okay. So go on. Do. Okay, right. so. <laughs> Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh, yeah. Ricky, I hear that music. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off live from Marshall Red Gallery. Today we have special guest Mark Ween, founder, son of founder? Son. Son of founder. Son of founder, yes. Okay. <laughs> SOF. Son of founder Mark Ween and friend of son of founder Steve Glassman. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are been living in a bubble, we have a carpet store, we have a rug store. Am I saying this right? Let's cut back 20 years, 30 years. 25, yeah, 25 30 years. You know what? Let's cut back 50 years. I've been here 49 years. Okay. Now you're running this business uh, yes. and it's going well, right? Very well. You're doing well? Yes, we are. <laughs> then my dad, who you've known for how long? Your dad and I have been best Bring friends little, for 30, a closer to you. 35 years. Dad's in the rug business, or excuse me, dad's in the, in the um, restaurant business. Mark is killing it with carpet and tile. Mark, by the way, is partners in the restaurant business. You were in the restaurant business with him? Oh, yeah, I took all his money. Yeah. Not all his money, but I took a lot of money. I never knew that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the first, yes. the first flow in Eddie's was not Mark, was just me. That was the one at Sam in, in Chagrin. Yeah. Right. And then we opened, where did we open? Where do we have Columbus first? Yeah, Columbus, Cincinnati. We opened in Columbus and Cincinnati, and I, I took money West from Mark. Side, and, East and, side. Oh yeah, West Side too. Mentor. Yeah, I took about a hundred, hundred and fifty grand from yeah. him. How much? Is I, it, how thanks much, a lot, by the way. How much does it take to open a restaurant then? The yeah. one on some quarter of a million. Yeah. Two hundred fifty k gets you set. That's then. That was nineteen eighty five. Right. How much of that was Mark's? Uh, of just one restaurant. Of that one, approximately. Uh, I don't, 15 grand but there was six or seven restaurants <laughs> yeah, right. but i had the best seat at the bar every sunday to watch football and it was worth about 125,000. but with the restaurants from it went from 85 to what 97 so 12 years 85 actually to 95 so 10 years yeah. did you end up getting your money back Oh no, not a penny. I'm not still, a, not a I'm still paying them. <laughs> oh wow, I didn't know that. No. Were, you, were you never profitable? How does that work? Uh, never profitable. Never. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> your, your father, who has zero taste palate, is opening up restaurants. <laughs> I know. Okay. I know. Yeah, he eats oh, bread. The food, the food was good. <laughs> right. And running a business was not his forte, <laughs> as it isn't to this day. But he's a hell of a salesman. What makes him a good salesman? He's personable. He's a ball buster. People love him. He's, uh -huh. he's just awesome. I mean, when we met, I needed a big left-handed slugger. And two of his buddies were already on my softball team. And they said, we got this guy. He's running a bar and a hotel, surely not making money, but partying his ass off. <laughs> and I met him, and he became our left-handed, and he could rip the shit out of the ball. He was are you left-handed or do you both? He's a left lefty and, and catches righty. Doesn't catch very well. Very similar to you, by the way. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? I wish we had a clip. I wish, <laughs> yes. I wish forever that we had that clip of yeah. you doing that. Can I tell the story sure. real quick? So You keep talking. I'm just going to make sure your camera's on. Later on in years, Mark and I, Mark joined, uh, we joined a softball league that was... Uh, what was the age limit? Father, son, and could have been... It was 25 and older unless you're a legacy. No, no, no. It was no, no. 35 and older. I think it was 40 and 40 and older. over, oh. but, you, but if you had a son... He's in automatic. Right. Uh, 21, right. You have to be 21. Right. Yeah, so, so that makes Mark and I, I think we were close to 50 at that point. 48 I was to 21, 50. so yeah. you were 52. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Matthew, my Matthew played on the team. 
your Matthew played on that team. Nobody else from your side. Ryan. Did Ryan play too? Right. And and Ricky played. Ricky only played for one season, but there was a great game. Matthew played shortstop. Uh, uh, Mark played over first base, and Ricky was in left center field. I'll tell you something. Yeah. I, I, my instincts were it's irrelevant, but I want to get out there. I played for like three seasons with you guys. He he played at least two, yeah, probably you know, three. Right, because after this story, we could follow up with the, the best the best softball story in the world. When he ran around. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so let me tell this real yeah, okay, quick. Sorry. All right. So so there's a guy on second or third. I, I don't know. The other team. Guy guy hits a ball to left center field in the gap. Okay. And Matthew and I and Mark were all looking. We go, oh, that's, that's burn. Ricky's never going to get that. And Ricky's running and running and running. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, with it, not with his glove hand, but with his bare hand, no, he says, sticks it up and catches the ball. Like he robs this guy of extra bases. <laughs> and Matthew's at shortstop. And you can't believe you caught it anyways. And you're not too, too up on baseball rules that once you catch the ball, if a guy's on base, he can advance. <laughs> right. So you were like, oh, my God, I caught it. I caught it. And Matthew's going, throw me the ball, Ricky. Throw me the fucking ball. You know, man, Matthew can get it. Right. It was, I was a great I time. was actually playing third. And right. Uh, Matt and I started laughing our ass off. I've never seen that in my life. This is his glove hand. <laughs> right. And well, he the reaches ball, on the, the ball. ball is ripped. It's a line drive about the point. Right. Wasn't a pop. The ball right. comes no. to the right. So yeah. instead of crossing over, it felt yeah. easier to do. Yeah. I don't have the instinct. Right. I don't play the game. No yeah, instincts at <laughs> Great all catch. for softball. Great catch. I wish we had footage of that. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. I mean, it had been on ESPN. <laughs> the ball is ripped. It's going over his head, and he goes, whoop. He goes right in his hand. Yeah, and then the and guy guys, tagged back. guy's tagging up, and I'm going through the fuck. And then we just started laughing. Yeah, it was right. unbelievable. The way I remember it was, after I caught it, you were like, oh. So I was looking at you like, oh, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. And then Matt was like, oh. And then I'm like, oh. Right. There was only one out. See, our right. whole life at that time was softball. Right. You know, we had. Uh, Working softball. We had uh, two, three leagues, Tuesday night, Thursday night, doubleheader Sundays. Right. And all tournaments all over the state of Ohio. So Steve was our big we left-handed. We played Tuesday, Thursday, and doubleheaders on Sunday. That's yeah. four games a week. Plus tournaments. <laughs> Could we do that now? <laughs> we couldn't even walk to the baseball diamond, let alone do that. Uh, you know? I remember where I'm playing third, and then a stomach ache hit me. That's the best story you know, in the world. I'm pitching. Right. No. Ricky's playing third base. Right. And, yeah. you're, and, and, you're, I'm, and I'm pitching. You're over second base. No, no, no. Okay. I was pitching. You're right. Okay. And all of a sudden, Ricky calls timeout. It's the third inning. In the middle of the third and inning. The, and there's one out. There's a guy in first. The batter's up. The count is two and two. Ricky goes, Mark, excuse me. Ricky, what? I step off. And he goes, I got to go make duty. I go, <laughs> the fuck you talking about? You're going to go make duty, okay? I've played 10,000 softball games and no one has ever left the game to go make duty or it's take a piss or duty. anything. You do it in between innings. You know, I, I got to go right I, now. No, it was, I had a very bad stomach. Well, I understand. You had to go right now. Like I said, I've played 10,000, maybe 100,000 games. No one's ever done that. He leaves... There's I have to leave the There's mound. An outhouse in right yeah, field. Right. right. In the parking lot. Yeah, the okay? parking lot. I, he leaves... I go, I go from the pitcher's mound to play third base. Yes. The very next guy hits a rope down third base. I don't get my glove down. It hits me in the fucking shins, and I'm on the ground. I'm motherfucking him for life. I'm motherfucking him for life. <laughs> okay. and Ricky's in the outhouse. Right, he's in the outhouse, and he comes back and announces to everybody, I just made a duty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to kill him. It was unbelievable. Uh, you're on your legs. And I think that was at the same game. No, the next week we played at that same field. Yeah, it was about 100 degrees right. out. Right. And Mark, Mark used to hit when Mark, it, w there were 11, 10 guys in the field. If everybody played on the third baseline when Mark batted, because that's all he did. But at any rate, Mark batted, and he hit one through everybody on the left side of the field right. and rolled all the way into the parking lot. And now Mark's got to run the bases. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark's not used to running all the way around the base. He no. has singles, no. sometimes doubles. I don't think he has. Do you have a career triple? <laughs> Is this? I was I was 
futzing around with the camera. Is this when when uh, he, he you told him to keep running, or is this still yeah, the poop yeah. story? No, he kept oh. running. He, he, yeah, he, he, Mark was done before he got to first base, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just kept rolling. Yeah. And he had no 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 anticipation he was going to have to run around, but the ball kept running. <laughs> right, yeah. and everybody's yelling, "Run, run, run!" I don't want to fucking run. The sole of your shoe out. fell off. The sole yeah. of my shoe. And you falls didn't off. stop at home. You hit home, and then you went to a little bit more of a trot, <laughs> s- slower, and you ran to your car for the rest of that game. Yeah. Oh, I ran to the bushes to get out of the sunlight and I'm sitting in the bushes going I'm gonna die I got up I grabbed my glove I walked into the parking lot laid my car all the way back at the Cadillac the seats go all the way back laid down for another game and a half never moved turned the air conditioning on high and when you were done I drove home and that was it Uh, we just told this story the other day, but we're on the podcast now. I always thought it was so funny. Uh, Chucky, your brother, right. would uh, read the obituaries. He would buy a dozen Davis Bakery cookies. Chocolate chip cookies, Chocolate right. Chocolate chip because he would get six for free. So right. he would bring 18. <laughs> right. Now, everybody on the other team knew it, too. So they would all come over to the get chocolate bench, chip right. cookies. <laughs> and Chuck was always reading the obituaries and going. It's a sun- Sunday morning. Yeah, right. well, this is a good Jewish one because, oh, I know these people are rich. They're going to have locks yeah, and sable and cream lunch. cheese. Right. <laughs> and, Hair and cream here. Right. I go, Chuck, why do you always read the obituaries on Sunday mornings? He goes, I want to see where I'm going to have lunch. <laughs> I want to hear more about, I didn't know that, Mark, you were an investor, and I want to hear more about uh, whatever numbers we're comfortable talking about and how this this carpet store came to be. Because Marshall Carpet, has business been booming, by the way, since I started this podcast? Booming for 48 years. I'm saying, has it been booming more? Yes. Have we been doing a good job for you? Oh, because of the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think we sold three or four rugs <laughs> over the country, which is one millionth of one percent of our total volume. How much? How much in sales do you think you've had for those four rugs? Those four rugs. Yes. Yeah. Twenty eight hundred dollars. What kind of commission do do the kids get here? Seven <laughs> percent. Uh, okay. So two hundred bucks they make on a sale like that. If they sell retail, which your father's which the only you did does that, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, 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 this is now it's it's making it seem like it's not worth it. No, we love the notoriety on your no, podcast. No, it's great to look at. What do you mean it's not worth it? I don't think we did it for the money. That's I was doing it to get you guys business. Yes. Well, we appreciate you. Never know when you're a big star. <laughs> the, you the, could be wearing op- Marshall carpet on your head. The opening you just had on Mark uh, Norman's yeah. podcast. Where you did the drone drone shot with Marshall Carpet? Looks good, right? Oh yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. I while we're here, I thought good production value. I want to film a commercial in the store, and I did. But you know, I'm just wearing whatever. Right. And sweatpants. And you know, I'm not, I'm unshaven. Yes. Those are before. This was the first shot before the sweatpants shot. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices, and at Marshall Carpet One you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! And then dad, it was just a joke, and then dad said, you saw it. And yeah. he said, it's, we would air this if you, if you shaved and you, 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 know, you, you weren't wearing a sweatshirt. So I said, fantastic. <laughs> I thought, how funny would it be if I put this joke-ish, you know, it's a real, yeah. it's a real commercial. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's a commercial, and it's well done. And I played it sincere, because what's funnier than being sincere? I haven't figured it out, if anything else. And I shaved, and I put on this nice Oxford button-down. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! And we're back. And then uh, it turns out that you guys don't like people being comfortable. <laughs> well, when I saw it the second time, because I knew that was the one we were going to air, yeah. 
my first thought was, he's still wearing fucking sweatpants, okay? <laughs> this is a commercial, and he's got the white ties in the front and sweatpants. I'm tucked in. <laughs> I can't air anything with you wearing sweatpants. So unbeknownst to me, but I should have known this, the next day I come in and Ricky's here, and I go, why didn't you wear a pair of pants? He goes, well, I didn't bring any. I, I don't wear pants. I don't like how they feel on me. I don't like how they touch. I don't like the feel. I don't like anything. And as usual, I just said, well, that's Ricky. He's a fucking weirdo. Why not okay. just say, well, you know, wear your dad's pants just for the commercial? He didn't see. No one I, looked I at you know, with the I sweatpants. I didn't think you would show up with, without pants. If, Real I, pants. if I put that commercial mm -hmm. on Twitter and or Instagram and or YouTube, how many likes does it have to get before you say, fuck it, I'll air it? On TV? One spot, one time. 74 million, the same as Trump. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, obviously, I mean, th this is a beautiful, luxurious, you're, you're not just selling carpet and flooring, you're selling a lifestyle, you're selling art, you're selling a home. But aren't you thinking about trying to sell comfort as well? That's what it's all about is comfort is first. And yet the most comfortable thing I could be wearing on my body, you're saying, is the reason we cannot promote this store. Explain yeah, that to me. It's an oxymoron. You're an oxymoron. <laughs> that thing is gorgeous. <laughs> It's an oxymoron. <laughs> Let's go to the, if I could, for one second, there's a lot of people that are interested in Marshall Carpet. I think <laughs> I think we should go to the origins where Marshall comes from. Sure. Do you know? I actually, uh, we have a little bit of a sizzle. So Marshall Wayne, the founder of Marshall Carpet, was 56 years old when he decided to open up his carpet store on the second floor of a mall, 650 square feet. He's 56 years old, he's got five kids, two are in college, one's in law school, and I'm about to go to college, which is a huge waste of money. And I shouldn't have said that because I'm not doing it as his son. <laughs> okay. So he decides he's in the wholesale flooring business, that's petering out, he's gonna open up his own retail store. So in 1966, he opens up this in 1971. Chuck, his son, 1972, his other son, Mark, joined the company. So that's where we get the name Marshall. And he was married to a lovely woman named Mindell, known as Mindy. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, or what an interesting documentary we just watched. <laughs> um, and that was the start. We'll that be right back with a word from our sponsors. Hello, Goblins and TYSO fans. Please buy merch for my son. The t-shirts are soft and beautiful, and the new hoodie is very warm and comfortable. <laughs> Please buy merch from us. We need the money. <laughs> and we're back. Yeah, man. And that was just the start of it. I mean, that was 1971 when he joined, or 1972, and now we're 17,000 feet of everything. 20,000 square floor. foot warehouse, 16 right. installers, 16 crews. How many employees? You got to have, we got to have 100 employees, don't There's we? A little over 100 people. There was my dad by himself. And don't forget, starting a business from scratch. How could I? And then my brother comes in. And then a year later, I left Ohio State and came home and went to work. And then my father became the. Um, safety director. safety right. service director right. of University Heights. So he sold the business to my brother and myself. I was 20. My brother was 24. And we took it from there. And then you continue this business. Your carpet and tile. Dad finishes the rug store. Or excuse me, Dad finishes at the restaurant. We knew each other, but we weren't friends before that. He started to come to the restaurant. We became friends at the restaurant. That's when I started playing oh. softball for him. And that restaurant did great. He didn't own any of that. And then three years later, I go, Mark, I'm going to open up another Flo and Eddie's in Columbus. Give me 20 grand, you know, and you're going to own 10% and you'll have your money back in six, 10 months late, you know. No problem. And he wrote me a check. He believed in me. And he kept writing me checks. And what is it, 35 years later? And he's still writing me checks. <laughs> <laughs> so your father and I, who were workaholics, yes. seven days a week, yep. I've knocked out five sons. I'd like to also <clears throat> say that uh, 
it's not just seven days a week. Growing up, uh, Dad would wake me up when he got back from work. for uh, I would get to pick uh, two cookies between Omi Raisin and Oreo. I could do two of each one or one of one. That was around 2, 3 in the morning. And then I'd have a stomach ache, so I'd be late to school, and you would drive me to school at 8. Yeah. So you'd get home at 2 or 3, leave at 8. Right. So um, he's in the restaurant business. He's coming home at 2, 3 in the morning, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. He's got you two guys. I got this. He's got but five boys. We're playing softball three, four, five times a week, mm -hmm. but we need a release. And that's when your dad like and I a, started. No, not go. that kind of release. Right. <laughs> we started. I was just going to say getting, getting jerked off. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, not that kind of release. Although, you know. So we started gambling. That was our Oh, you thing. didn't gamble until then? You no. seem like a lifetime gambler. Well, he's Pretty a lifetime much. gambler. Pretty much. I've always been a degenerate gambler since 12. But right. I was playing in high stake poker games at 16, 18. Let, let me tell the story real quick, yeah. all right? We were in high school, okay? Mark's famous. Mark in high school and college, I don't think ever went to a class. But Never. Meanwhile, I had Hebrew school, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Every week, the bus would pick me up in front of Wiley Junior High and drop me off at the temple. I would pay the bus driver to drop me off at the mall just to hang out so I wouldn't have to go to Hebrew school. And I'd go down to the bowling alley, and there he is winning money playing pool. Oh, yeah. Shooting at, at pool, 15, made a living. 16 years right. old. Oh, yeah. Lost, made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, won a seven piece, gorgeous, imported Japanese pool stick. It had to be worth. Could you call them that anymore? Uh, yes. Asian? Oh, I thought you a uh, pool stick. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you supposed to say Japanese American? Yes, pool Japanese American pool cue. And I, uh, Lost that about six months after I won it, but I've uh, been gambling ever since. So he and I started gambling together, going to the racetrack. Don't forget, no casinos in Ohio until about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So there was two racetracks open, Thistledown and, and Northfield. Northfield. Right. And I wonder to this if we day, get the Thistledown and Northfield sponsorship. Probably, yeah. although now the big companies own them. Right. But 30 years later, your dad and I could walk into either place. And the ticket tellers and everybody would perk up and go, oh, my God, Mark and Steve are here. They're back. I would love going to the racetracks with you guys. I you don't know anything. Go anything. This, I used to go with us. I all the time. Sure. Right. Yeah, because uh, you, whenever you won, uh, you'd give me something. Yes. Yeah, sure. And I would just watch you with stacks of hundreds. <laughs> Uh, 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 you, the energy that you had, you would be the same thing as if you were literally just putting them into a fire. You were just, you were angry. You didn't, you were not enjoying yourself. You were not enjoying yourself. I don't know why you were doing it. And then you would, you would win eight grand, but you said, I, I lost nine the last, last race or whatever, yeah, right. all over the place. But yeah, everyone was just so nice to me because I was with you guys. Yeah, well, and we're, free we're food. known well, as Mark's the biggest tipper, tipper in the city <laughs> and everybody knows that. So we take care of our people. I mean, these are hardworking people and they, Salt of the earth, what did you say? Salt, salt of the, the earth. earth. You just, let's say it at the same time. One, two, three. Salt, salt of, of the earth. earth. And um, they always took care of us. But it's not that I was angry. I was betting every racetrack in the country <laughs> that was going off. So there's six TVs. <laughs> oh, I would love if we had a, a stack and, of tickets we could and, show. Well, we got them. Yeah, well, from, one, from one thing. Yeah, that's $5,300 from the that's Breeders' from the Cup, Breeders Cup, Breeders Cup 10 days ago, ago right? Saturday. <laughs> Anything happened from it? No, it's fifty three hundred dollars I spent. Right. I didn't cash a ticket in, mm. <laughs> so whatever. Um, I didn't go to the casino that day, so I saved another. But 5, you're right. 000. He's betting twelve races yeah. at a time. Who? He, as soon as one race goes off, he's got to make sure he doesn't have it. And, and I it's learned how to bet. I learned how to bet super from super you. effect. That's all right. we bet. It has to be the big shot, the big hit. So we're betting ten to twenty tickets per race with five races going off. I gotta concentrate, mm -hmm. By the and that's way, why your dad came up with, and I, with a system. We I, have numbers. We bet. I've been going to the racetrack with him now for thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. We've been betting races. Never, ever has he bet a horse to win. Just well, win. No, I wouldn't know what to do. We've right. never read a program. We don't the study the fight. jockeys. It's just numbers. We don't know the horses. We bet alls, which means yeah. we want the bombers coming <laughs> in. And if you study a program and you learn the game 
people are going to go, oh, I love the three horse. Oh, great. We're listening. And go, three horse. We look up. Yeah, he's two to one. No right. shit you love the three horse. <laughs> Everybody I love loves the three. eight horse. He's 47. <laughs> That's the fucking horse I want to win the race. So I wouldn't bet to win because you can't win enough. I got to bet a super effect. I want to win. Five thousand to a hundred. Super effective for everybody. You have to you have to bet the first, second, third, and fourth place horse in order. In order. So if it comes the eleven nine one seven, you have to have a ticket in that order. So there's a lot of combinations, and Mark likes to have as many combinations as possible. Trump. Yeah. The way you just did that. Right. Trump. Yes. I can't do impressions, but I'm going to try. It's mini conversations. <laughs> oh, I sound like a pool cue. Jesus Christ. I don't so, think I could do that. Can I give you an amazing story? What do you guys think? Yeah. Racetrack. Yeah, Come listen. on. You can make a little more noise than that. Hey, Ricky, I, think, yeah. I think I have footage, if I didn't erase it, of him betting the Breeders' Cup the last time so we could show well, I'm gonna wanna, oh, yeah, I'm going to want to introduce to the people that, that don't follow me on Instagram that watch the podcast because all my Instagram followers, they're, they're nutso for them. The introduction of the uh, the Vegas dad. So we'll cut to a clip of sure. that. I put 500 bucks in it. I pressed it one time. Okay. And on the first thing, I hit this, and it hit 5,246. Oh, my God. <laughs> one, two, 20, 40. Vegas, Vegas dads. Dad. This little piggy went to Mario. <laughs> Vegas dads. Vegas dads. <laughs> We're smoking something from uh, Nevada. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, easy guys, on light it up, with, like on the draw. You little <laughs> oh, oh, Marky baby, yes. Come on, boy. Come, Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Give me a biggie. Give me a biggie. Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Come on, thousand. Forty-seven. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Vegas dance. <laughs> but right. okay. we'll do this right. first. Every time one of my boys turned eighteen, I took him to Paradise Island to go to the Atlantis Hotel because you can bet and gamble down there when they're eighteen. And as any good father would want to do to their 18-year-old is teach them how to drink, gamble, and smoke cigars. <laughs> so um, I'm down there with the second trip with Ryan, my second oldest. Shout out to Ryan. We'll put his Instagram handle right. up here. So we land there Thursday. And Saturday afternoon, it's the first day that Atlantis is taking sports book. The first day. That you could bet races. That you could bet sport. races or used anything in the world. to be just a casino. Okay. They opened up a sports book where you could bet races, which he's... He's heaven there. So I'm getting my balls kicked in at the tables. And I say to my son, Ryan, here's 500 bucks for the fourth time in the trip. Here's 500 <laughs> bucks. And um, I'm going to go bet some races and kind of back off from the tables a little bit. Because he could so, pour through three, four grand in a crap table in 15 minutes. Oh. Five minutes. Yeah. Right. No question. So, and I do that many times over during the, the three days, it starts to add up. So I'm betting a big race at Del Mar. Del Mar. <laughs> and I bet this race at Del Mar, and I do all my Superfecta tickets and all my numbers and the whole thing, and the race goes off, and the third horse runs over the second horse, and the second horse finishes third. I have them the other way. And the Super pays $14,242. Like, like he doesn't remember. Like I don't way. remember, 18 and a half years ago. So... <laughs> I miss it because he runs them over. Take the ticket. I got a little table next to me. I got a drink on the table and a cigarette. And I put it, the tickets on this table. The losers. And I have he puts two all or the three, losers away. Two or three other races going on. And I'm tickets. And my son comes over and says, Dad, I can't get into a table. Um, teach me how you do the races. You're always, this is fun. Teach me what you're doing. I think I know the end of this now, but so I, I said, spoil it. Okay, Ryan. No problem. Grab a couple tickets, and I'll show you. And he sits down next to me, and I said, look at the last race at Del Mar. It finished 8-3-2-4, mm -hmm. and I have 8-2-3-4. Mm -hmm. I bet the all on top at 47-1, to 1, and then 17-1, to 1, and 9-1, to 1, and 26-1. to 1. No chalks on the ticket, 14-horse field. It's a bomber. 
Okay, and I have a full dollar ticket. And he goes, <laughs> I go, read the ticket. It'll say all. And then one, three, six, with one, two, three, six, with two, four, nine. And he's reading it and he goes, yeah, one, it all in one, two, three, six, with one, two, three, six, with two, four, nine. I said, no, I didn't have the two in the okay. second hole. I only had them third and fourth. He goes, oh, he goes, well, he's down here three times. Could give me the fucking ticket. <laughs> I look at it. It's, she punched the wrong ticket. It she was, gave it me was the eight, first one, day two, that three, they were six, open. With one, yeah. two, three, six, you want it. with two, four, nine. <laughs> But I had thrown it away. If he doesn't walk over, <laughs> I, know, yeah, I never look I at it again. Say. And let me tell you something. Every night, whoever cleans up, they all pick up tickets, and they, they run over the machine, it. and they feed them through the machine. <laughs> Can you imagine some janitor, four in the morning, trashed out of his mind, running it through, and all of a sudden it pops $14,242? <laughs> he fucking shit. So, so he goes to the teller. I go to the teller, and I go, young lady. You punched me the wrong ticket. She goes, sir, let me get my manager. I said, no, no, don't get your manager. <laughs> Cash this in. And then get your manager. Okay. No, fuck the manager. <laughs> she cashes it in. I give her 500 bucks and said, you're the best. Okay. <laughs> I never look at my tickets, which is a uh, horse betters right. big no-no. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, you just displayed it a bit. I'm assuming those numbers are right. Uh, but I've always known that about you. I, the three of us, actually. Yes. We're all good with numbers. That being said, he's he's worked with numbers all of his life. That's all he does, especially anything divisible by nine, because that has to do with <laughs> square yards, and square, square feet. Yard. Yes, okay. Uh, but his numbers are are unbelievable. He he's good. If somebody comes into the store and says, "Listen, my room's this, this, this," I go, "I need about sixty-five and two-thirds yards." Are you able to visualize the uh, the numbers, or do you have uh, them memorized? No. Well, both, but what I do is visualize. So let's say they need 65 and two thirds yards at 3150 a yard. Okay, in my mind, I'm taking 65 underneath and I'm doing $2,017. I go, it's gonna be about a couple thousand dollars. No calculator, no nothing. And I'm always gonna be so, real close. So, so 35 and a quarter at, 30, at $31. Do you do 35 and a quarter at 31? Because what I would have to do is I'd have to do 35 at mm -hmm. 31. Uh, and then a quarter at one and add those He's together. He's not looking for exact. No, what, I, what I'm range. doing is 30 times 30 is 900, and you got another five and a one, and a six. So you're going to be about $1,000. Here, I'm going to tell you what all. he's better at, okay? Carpet comes in 12 foot widths. So how's that have to do with nines? Because square the foot, tw 12, you, 12 foot wide times the length if anyone, divided by, the way, by we'll, nine. We'll keep this going, but if anyone needs to go to the bathroom, we're going to do it during this. But, but I do want to hear but, this part. But he's yeah. good at it. So yeah. if it's 12 foot wide by any length, 12 by 15. Right. So you take 12 by 15, which is 160, 180, 180, right. 180, divided by nine. And that gives you 20, 20 yards. No, 20. Yeah. Right. 20 that's square 20 yards. yards. So that's from converting square feet to square yards divided by nine. But what he can do is this. I'll say, Mark, this guy needs... Hold on. A I want to go back to this one for a second and then tell me. I have to do... So 15 times 10 and right. then 15 times 2. I can I know 900. Then this conversation is irrelevant if we're not going What's exact. Right. Right. 13 by 7, 15. 12 foot width, which means we have to buy more and, and seam it. To get seven the only thing feet. that I could seem it is it seems that this isn't it. Okay. So let's move on yeah, to, no my, to the I, next section. You couldn't be more <laughs> boring. I'm talking about gambling. You wait, want wait to go I want to go one other thing. Going back to his trip to the Bahamas when he won that 14000 he then continued to win that trip. And there's a law when you leave the Bahamas, you cannot have, what is it, more than 10000 cash? Per family. Now, I got $36,000 that I need to get across and if you declare it, you have to pay taxes on it. Fuck that. I just won $25,000. <laughs> I'm not paying taxes on it. $12,000 in tax. No, it wouldn't be that much. So um, they would take out 22 23%. Oh, I thought you guys were doing well. <laughs> yeah, so listen, and then I would have to story. pay another 28% on top of it because yeah. it would be declared. Right. So it would theoretically cost me 49%. Forgetting that. So I'm packing. We're with another guy 18 year old a buddy of mine i'm giving them each 7500 dollars. we're putting it in their <laughs> underwear in their balls we're putting it in their pocket in their back pockets any underwear uh, putting it in socks underwear hiding it so they've each got Are 15, any of these people 000. scared of getting caught no they don't know the law 
Okay, <laughs> they don't give a fuck. Okay, why are you doing this? I go, I don't want to carry it all. Is this one okay time. to be saying? Yeah, this is, is what I'm going to turn me in. Years this ago. is 17 years ago <laughs> right. in the Bahamas. Statue of limitations is gone. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, besides, this is now taking I shoes take, off. Now I take my son. I give him nine thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Okay, <laughs> it's I got ten. nine thousand. Well, I got more left over. I said, "Fuck it, I'm putting it in my thing." Uh-huh. We're going up and. Every customs official is patting people down, asking them a million questions. We start sweating. Okay, now I turn to the guy and go, we can't leave the line. It'll be obvious. We're going to get in big trouble now. They're going to take all our money, and I'm gonna, they're going to confiscate it. And then for me to get it back, I'm going to have to fill out papers, pay full taxes on it. It's going to take a year. Okay, right before we go up, they change custom officials. My son gets up to who, by the way, is fucked up from the night before he smoked the cigar he can't breathe he's throwing up all night the I'm cigars make him. you fucked up oh, oh you smoke these are they big cuban sick. cigars yeah. he's 18 years old right. he probably had 50 drinks at the tables <laughs> so i'm holding him up we get up they're just changing go hey how you doing i, you have, I go yeah i took my son he's 18 I asked my wife if we could take 500 bucks out of the cookie jar she gave me 400 i gave him 200 200 i go we got eleven dollars left, but it was great. The weather was great. Now we're staying at the Atlantis, okay? The suites are thousand bucks a night, and you know if you're not comped, and a nicer room is three grand a night. And I'm telling them I'm going there four hundred bucks for four nights and five days. <laughs> okay, I figure I'm getting arrested, but I'm giving it a shot. He goes, listen. Good for you. He pats us on the back. We're sweating like crazy, and we go through. And the next guy, he lets my buddy through, and we all go in the bathroom, take all the money, and put it in a in a thing. And I go, it wasn't worth the aggravation. I should have paid the fucking taxes. <laughs> it's crazy. So, anyways, we've had tons of gambling trips then we started going to vegas as much as possible we went we used to stay at the golden nugget downtown and we used to say that it's be, it's better to be a big fish in a small pond in and other to words, never have been a fish at all in other words well mark was a big gambler but vegas style it you know it wasn't big like we know whales like a whale right okay but at the nugget he was the biggest gambler there so we got the best service. We got the best suite. We had health clubs with private. It's Old Town Vegas. Limos. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's Old yeah. Town Vegas. Yeah. I did a I did a, a Vegas. What was that commercial? That Vegas commercial I did. You remember? You did do a Vegas. I don't commercial. remember what it was. For, it was some it, Vegas it was for the Chamber of Commerce it, or something. I don't know, but I remember it's where I met Jensen Carp, who wrote it. So shout out to Jensen Carp. We'll put his Instagram and handle here. Speaking of Vegas, I think a shout out to Teddy, who's one of the Vegas dads who isn't here yet. Shout out to Teddy. Shout out to Teddy. Shout out to Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but point is, uh, uh, we filmed at the Nugget. And uh, did they have then, the, uh, there's a, the pool outside, the center of a pool is a shark tank. Did they have that when you guys were there? No. no. That Seems was after, mean. that's when we went up to the strip to Caesar's Palace. That's when we went with another friend of ours. I won't mention any names, but you know who I'm talking about. Right. And he's a whale. A whale. Okay. Why can't we mention a name? Okay. We don't want to mention it, but he's a way. Because I'd like to tell a story about, about oh, one gotcha. of his things, you know. Okay. The, the best story about him that, that we can remember. So he's a good friend of ours, and he's won big money, and he's lost big money there. I'm big talking money is uh, six figures. Yeah. Multiple six figures. So I can remember a trip where he won about $120,000 cash. He got cash, not a check. Right. Me, <laughs> Mark, and him. Took the red eye home that night from Vegas. It leaves Vegas at midnight and lands in Cleveland about six, six. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. We got like one of your brown regular How duffel bags. We got $120,000 cash. I know I'm, I'm landing on something that people are going to yell at me about, but how could you leave at midnight and it's six? There's a time change. Right. From Vegas three hours. to Cleveland. So when, Vegas when I to leave, it's got to be at least five no. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Plus a three hour difference. No, no, no. Not when you're coming back. It's yeah. three and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah. You got the wind at your back. It's a whole different yes. story. So, anyways, we land. Maybe we land at eight. I'll check into this. Maybe it's we land at eight thirty in the morning. Me. But we got a we got a, a little attaché case with one hundred and twenty thousand dollars cash in it. We want to get home. We Matt, Mark and I didn't feel good about taking it through the radar and the right. airport right. and everything. Are Getting, you not allowed to travel with cash? No, you can. You but can it? You're not supposed to go to certain states, travel. and you're coming from Vegas, and then you could ask questions, but it's never happened. It made That's me carry. my biggest worry. I mean, oops, come really? on, you're going to have to cut oh. that out. Yeah. You're going to have to cut that out. I just said his name. 
All right, when he said his name, make sure you bleep it. Right. And then uh, put in uh, Alfonso Romero. Yeah, I like Alfonso. Yeah. yeah. At any rate. He used to so play third base. Mark, Mark and I and our friend landed Cleveland at 6 o'clock in the morning with a briefcase of $120,000. And he says, our friend, he's hungry. Wants to get a Manners big boy, two of them. Right. With onion rings and a chocolate shake. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, now the now, only manners left in Cleveland, and first of all, it would be open, is in the middle of. It's 130th and Brook Park. Yeah, okay. you got no no three Jews in the world belong <laughs> anywhere within 50 miles of this place. <laughs> it's let alone you, it's right. six in the morning with 120 thousand in cash in his pocket. <laughs> I got 17 thousand cash left over in my pocket, right. and I'm shooting for him. We walk in, and three guys there. Maybe there was three teeth between the three of them. Okay, and they were rough looking. Overalls, <laughs> tad, tad. It's it across up. the street from the Chevy plant. They're auto workers. Yeah, and stuff we like had that. no business being there. And would it, you say that these men are salt of the earth? Yeah, salt, salt of the, the earth. Salt of the earth. Yes. Right. Salt of the earth. No right. question. Are they right. salt of the earth? <laughs> right. And there's a lot of salt in their big boys right. too. Right. So go ahead. No. So. And then some lady said, "Our there, friend, and by the way, our just friend said his name again. No, I didn't. I yes, said no. our friend, by the way. Yes, is hard of hearing. Mm. So must so, I. So we're eating. We're Mark and I. We, we're we get the food. Boys. No, here right. Steve orders a Coke. Okay, <laughs> and I order water because I'm shitting in my pants. I'm not eating. I want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and he's got two big boys." A Plate of onion rings, a chocolate shake, a Coke, and a water. And he's talking loud. He's, he's going, going to me and Mark. How go, about when we were at the table, I held the dice for an hour and 20 minutes. He goes, Mark, I cashed out 120000 I was 40 in and the he's, hole. He's basically okay. screaming. Right. I was 40. This is, he's talking like this, okay? Projected. And these guys are going, what the fuck? It was, hey, I was, it was our last. We were leaving right after it. I'm 40 in the hole. I come up 80 to the plus, and then he goes, you know how much I left on the table? I go, yeah, $85,000 yeah. on the table. Right. When someone sevens out, your whole bet, whatever's uh -huh. there, they clear. Right. You know that. Yeah. It was right. 85000 so, Oh, I'm a little high. I thought you meant afterwards for a tip. <laughs> no, no. But when we left Manners, I gave the girl a $100 tip. Right, he did. Okay, on his, you know, $21 check or right, something. because we couldn't wait to get I the gave, hell out of there. I, had, I went in my pocket, I had a stack of 100 I, <laughs> I ripped off $125 and said, here, you, that's all okay. yours. That's going to segue into the story where a casino story where I was not present, but the friend that we just mentioned and Mark. Alfonso Romero. Yes, Alfonso Romero and Mark went to Atlantic City. We've been to Atlantic City on lots of trips. We have a friend that's a uh, host that gets us there on private jets. We've been there yeah. lots of times. This particular time, Mark and our friend, uh, Mark and Alfonso were in Atlantic City. No, plus seven other guys. Right, right. Okay, Steve couldn't make it. Right. What, I don't know what was wrong, I don't but know. who knows? Right. Sounds like a so, sausage fest. What I can tell you is this. There's nine of us, and seven of these guys could drink and do as many drugs on the face of the earth than anybody I know at 55, 60 years old. There wasn't enough vodka in Atlantic City. No. So we get there with a second night in, and the nine of us are going to their high-end restaurant and it was lay, get it laid out. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Morton's or Prime, right. something like that. Right. So we get fucked up. We're in the suite. We're in this penthouse suite that the whale has. And we were. Alfonso. Alfonso. Yeah, Alfonso. Yeah. Smoking, drinking. We get down there. We order. Everybody gets the biggest steak they got. <clears throat> Six lobster tails. Five pounds of, of uh, Alaskan keen crabs. We want. Don't think they're not excessive because they are. Oh, we want uh, <laughs> five bottles of vodka on the table. Is there any way this is out of your element? And I'm just in a little bit of a silly mood here. But the way you're talking sounds like mm -hmm. it could be a rap. <laughs> it could be Drinking, because it's smoking. Can, <laughs> is there any way you could try and. and could I, hold on. I would like okay. to hear. Could, could, if I give you a little bit of a beat, will you talk the story, but every now and then try to be musical with sure, it? Sure, I can do that. You know what? Hold on. Actually, <laughs> hold on. Once, oh, Dad, give me your phone. Oh. <laughs> you went to Atlantic City? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Mark Weed! In Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic C -C City! So my boys and I are getting ready to go to dinner. There's nine of us. 
We're in the suite and we're drinking, we're smoking, Drink we're smoke. packing, we're smoking. smoking. Some guys are ready to go chomping, so we went to the uh, prime hold steakhouse. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. No, let him tell the story. Okay, story. Okay. Let him tell the story. I think this is a big loss, but I, I could very well be wrong. Yes. I enjoyed it. So where I are we going too. now? Where are we at? Okay. Now you're at the dinner. You okay. So we're eating guys. dinner and... You order everything. We order the steaks, steak, lobster, lobster tails, Alaskan king crab. Right. So we've got bowls of Bernays sauce, bowls bowl, bowl, of peppercorn, bowl. peppercorn sauce, and bowls of butter to dip the uh, fish and lobster and king crab legs. Five or six different potatoes plastered all over the mean? table. What do you mean? Like, like mayonnaise Lainese, potatoes, baked, French fried potatoes, baked hash potatoes, browns. double baked. Real quick, both of you. List all the potato dishes you could think of. We'll wait for the beat to drop. We'll go in order. Okay. What the hell is this? All right, we'll try it out. I'll start. Go ahead. We talk al gratin. Leonese. Hash browns. Not so. Fries. <laughs> Cottage. Wedge wedges. Twice baked. Sweet potato fries. Tater tots. <laughs> Dutch boys. Baker potatoes. Uh, 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 hash browns. I said hash browns. <laughs> oh, I lose. Okay. So go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> picture the table. We're eating. We're stoned. And all these heavy cream sauces are coming in my mouth. Oh, and I am right. eating a steak, and I am dipping that butter and that Bernays sauce and that peppercorn <laughs> sauce. And we're there for two hours just <laughs> eating, and then French silk pie for dessert. <laughs> so we get up, and these guys go, come on. They're going to go back to the room, get fucked up again, and then go gambling. I said, and they go, no, we're going to go gamble first. I said, I got to go back to the room. <laughs> to go duty? I to go duty. Okay. Right. Ricky, you'll, you, you'll, you'll this understand happens. this. So my stomach is gurgling, okay? <laughs> and I'm starting to sweat. So, of course, I go up to the uh, elevators, the elevator. and they have a sports book there. Hmm. And I go, it's a huge race going off at <laughs> Del Mar, Santa Anita, <laughs> West Coast track. I'm betting my numbers. Uh -huh. Okay. So I go up and I bet my numbers and they're all bombers. This is huge, huge. So the race is going and I go, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go. I am sweating. You know how sure. you've been there. Ricky knows. Ricky knows, if anyone knows. Race is coming down. The three horses winning. The six horses coming second. The one horse is third. Now I'm talking 38 to 1, 22 to 1, he 14 to 1. The nine I need fourth. the two or the nine fourth, and I see. Now I'm back by the elevators because I need to go, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to watch the end of the race. So if you've ever bet horses, there's color of silks. Uh, fours are yellows, twos are blues, nines and fives are green. So you can't tell so, the difference between a nine or a five? Well, it's I'm, hard to tell. You know, right. and then a five's like this, a nine's like this. I would say a five usually has bad teeth and a little overweight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> McDonald's is turning up its sauce game with Sriracha Max Sauce. Now through Saturday, get a free medium fries and soft drink when you purchase a new signature Sriracha sandwich or any of our other signature crafted recipe sandwiches. We're back. So... I've got the first three horses, and out of the corner, I see a green horse coming. Now, I don't get excited when I gamble. You see me win $4,000, $8,000, $10,000 I get excited. And your father him, cries right. like and screams like a bitch. Okay, <laughs> everybody in the casino has got to know. Not that there's anything wrong, though. No, because people are there to have fun. So we're having you know. fun, but I'm not. Well, I'm going, come on, baby. Come on, baby. I know it's going, okay? Come on, baby. And I go, and I look, and I see that green silk. I go, Yes! <laughs> And I shit right in my <laughs> pants. And I shit all over. Um, oh, shit. Okay. So I turn and I press the elevator. Three people are in the elevator. I can't get in. Okay. I wait for the next one. And I'm, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I get in. And I see a, a girl and a guy coming up. Press it. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door. Guy sticks his hand in. Opens it up and gets in. <laughs> I'm on 18, there's press 14. We weren't in the uh, elevator three seconds when the guy goes, whoa. <laughs> okay, now 
I'm bald as can be, and I am bright red. My head is down like this, okay? And sweat is dripping off of me. And he and his girlfriend, and I look up, I go, my bad. (laughs) These guys start pressing every button they can. They get off at the next stop. I get up, I go, I run into the suite, take my pants, socks off, roll them up in the Caesar's Palace, robe because i can't find anything big enough because they are trash 400 dollars pair of jeans a hundred dollar pair of socks i see the shoes i'll ask later i don't know your father buys my socks so yes (laughs) so for always he he doesn't have a shot we'll We'll, talk i don't want to ruin your momentum i'm sorry i I take a shower and i come out and i don't have any pants i just got a pair of shorts which i wore the next day and a half and I took them, and I ran down by the elevator. You know how they have those waste baskets usually by the elevator? Mm-hmm. And I take off the top. Yeah, the and C, I, the three, R2-D2s. Yes, yes. yes. And I push everything into the, <laughs> the ashtray I'm not the leaving hallway. it in the suite. There's no way <laughs> any person in the world should have to clean that up. And then the bottom line is, it was the five it horse and nine horse. horse. Oh, you I go win. back yeah. down, I'm all cleaned up. <laughs> And I go to cash the ticket. And she goes, sir, this is a guy. I go, no, it's good. And I try it again and again. And I go, print it out. And they print out a ticket and a result of, of your uh, winnings. And it was the five. So I think, I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I could say that it sounds like uh, that ticket was a real piece of horse shit. <laughs> we'll be right back after word with Lars Brothers. I have a poop the poop my pants story I'd like to share with you I guys. I know that you have, both have pooped your pants stories. I thought that was... A good it's way to good connect. Segue, right? That would be um, uh, that would be a, a a cool like if there were a dating app that had like wacky games that you could play and it's, and you could share like poop your pants stories or something like that where you know sensibilities. I'd have a lot of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many as Ricky, though. Yeah, but <laughs> there is a scat story from the old store that's the best. The best. Okay. Okay. And let him set it up. He's great. And this is a great story. Ignore you know what snap. I'm talking about, right? Yeah, with the, the customer I was yeah, waiting yeah. on. Yeah. So he set up how the office was and where the right. bathroom was right. and everything. Okay. So in our last store, before we built this store, we had a showroom about one third the size, and the bathrooms <laughs> were like, in the showroom at the end at the desk and stuff but you know they're right not in the pit next to where all the people like were here right. right in the pit where the people work is was the bathrooms well thin walls very thin walls, thin walls and, and a hollow doors, door the hollow doors right. i mean i couldn't even when we built this place we have oak doors on every bathroom <laughs> yes. in every office okay i said this is crazy so i'm waiting on a customer and i'm ready to write them up and it's a big sale and stuff and the husband goes, can I use your bathroom? And I said, sure. Now, there's two of my salespeople standing there. And I'm standing at a counter. And his I'm wife. I'm writing her, the information down with the wife. And all of a sudden, you hear, oh! 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this guy. This like, guy, guys, guys, Corona on the microphone. Oh, huh? this guy is. He's destroying, He's destroying the, bathroom. the bathroom. And it's and like there aren't even doors know, and walls. No, there's people 15, 20 feet away <laughs> thinking that somebody's going to stab. Okay. They're looking in the back. Both my employees get up, put their head down, and walk to the back because they're laughing so hard. And the wife is, she's, she can't take it. She's, she's, she can't believe it. Okay. She goes, Mark. I'll have to do this another time. And she walks out the door because she is embarrassed as shit. Okay. About six minutes go by, and the guy is still washing up. Who knows if he took a shower in there. He comes out, and he goes, where's my wife? I said, She's in the parking lot. We had a little issue here, and everybody had to leave the store. He goes, oh, he's, I said, don't worry. She's going to come back tomorrow and take care of this. He goes, good. I don't want to be here anyhow. <laughs> I love that story. Oh, can you imagine when he got in the car and she goes, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you couldn't do that at home. That's why we have oak doors in all our bathrooms now. A lot of scat humor here at Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. Okay, what else is there? Um, I want to make sure that uh, if, in case I don't edit that part, earlier on when you we were telling a softball story, we were talking about... Uh, 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 people on base, and I said, who's on first? And then you said, 
you just like went on and tell me yeah, i didn't catch it oh well you know yeah that's is that a pun yes i want to make sure that that at home whoever's editing this puts in a little abbott costello gift just out of out of respect uh, out of respect we respect we're, we're big baseball fans bbfs yes some people would say bbbf but people don't realize that baseball is technically one word all together one salt word. of the earth oh right, right. <laughs> one word so i'd like to tell a poop pants story go for it yeah fuck i must have been 33 <laughs> and i uh i um i'm feeling okay uh uh you know the i don't actually i must have been older because i think undateable was canceled i was i was having a little bit of some issue with with like Am I going to be working? Am I moving home? You know, and, and I want to meet with my manager and the manager at the time, he set an appointment for, I mean, probably, you know, two weeks. It was a ridiculous amount of time and my back has started hurting. So that's all backstory. We'll animate that. Now we're going to come in. I go to the chiropractor. I just got nervous. I just felt like I was on stage and I have to tell a funny story and I got nervous. Is this part of the story? Or? No, no, no. Oh, I'm okay. okay. I just needed to say that. I oh, needed to okay. say that feeling. What an interesting right. feeling I just you had. You had to meet with your manager two weeks out. You finally got the day. Right. So I go to the chiropractor, and uh, he adjusts my body. And I, don't want, I, I can't tell the story now. Okay. We'll go to another story. You want me to tell the story? I, I, no. I want to I, I be able to have, figure out why I'm feeling this way. Figure out later. Well, you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you gave me a look. <laughs> All right, I'm able to tell the story now. Yes. I go to the chiropractor. I leave the chiropractor. Chiropractor, I don't know if you know what Wilshire looks like near the 405, but it's it's uh, ten lanes. It's it's four, it's four, and it's two in the middle. Gotcha. It's very wide. And I uh, I start to get a stomach ache, but I had already crossed the street where my car was parked. So to cross back over ten lanes. <laughs> And to go back up to the chiropractor's office where and ask for a bathroom, it just felt like it would be better to find one this way. Right. I'm gambling here because I'm on Wilshire. It's it's there's business. There's yeah. gonna be someplace. Yeah. But somehow that half a mile block was all residential. So I walked almost a half a mile. I'm I, it's you know, it, not holding it in my stomach. My my I'm just clenched a little bit, right? And I go to a church, and I figure I could go to the church. They're always there to help people, a and the church. church is closed. And I remember I didn't know what to do. And I, do you remember that I called you? I absolutely I remember called you me. because am I, is it okay for me to, like, not break in, but, like, bang, open, if they're closed? I mean, what, what do I do? And um, it went away. The, the Lord took it away, and I'm okay now. So I start to walk back a little bit, and then I just have a casual street fart. It's just a fart. I've probably had three of them today. A little fart. I didn't feel bad, and it all just came out. <laughs> and I'm wearing shorts, so so I'm I'm trying to. I don't know. I mean, I I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I have to go back into that building. I don't know. Where you have a meeting be. with your agent. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, you had to text them. At the end of it, I ended up having to to text them. I want to actually pull up that email. I don't remember what it was, but I know it was funny. Um, so I'm crossing. The, I'm trying to walk back the street, but I'm trying to walk so it doesn't. You have a safety net of the underpants. So I, this isn't a lot of times I do. Sh I shit my pants once a year. It's not always a mess, but it happens. And usually it's you fart. You felt you did it. Did it make it into the underwear or not? Does this make sense? Yes, of course. You could <laughs> shit your Believe pants, me. but he then you, it turns out you didn't shit your pants. You right. just, you're going to have to like put Vaseline for a couple of days. <laughs> so I, I know this is got in the underpants and uh, I'm walking and, and as I'm start. I, you know, like Frogger to cross his 10 lanes, I, uh, I see that there's a little bit on my shoe, on the back of my shoe. So of duty? Of duty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, on the back of my shoe and uh, on my socks. So I'm crossing, and, and I'm crossing this way to get there. It's just, you know, the triangle. I'm trying right. to get there faster, but there's people that I would intersect. So I had to make sure I went behind these people, and when I go behind the people is when I start to feel it, now it's on the back of my leg. So I can't go in front of them. <laughs> Why? Because they're you're afraid they'll see shit on your leg. Um, yeah, or I mean, duty on your leg. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I would have done anything before I shit my pants. I would have I would have pushed them to the ground and called them all racial slurs as long as I could get to the bathroom faster. But after I poop my pants, I'm just there's too much shame in it. I just 
Uh, there's no rush anymore. I, it's just hiding. <laughs> so they are taking their time doing this story uh, or w- walking in front of me. And then I had to go into the building and I asked where the nearest bathroom was. And you have to go down two floors. So I had to go in the elevator. So I got in the elevator and same thing happened. That's what made me think about it. They close and someone comes in and they got in front of me. And then they said uh, they were getting off the same floor. Um, and he said, go ahead. Go he was ahead. being nice. And I said, no, 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 go ahead. <laughs> and it happened. Th- he said, no, it's OK. And then it had, like it was a con- I said, just go, <laughs> just go. And then I turned and I uh, I same thing. I, I had to take my socks and my underpants off. Mm-hmm. I had to wash my shorts. Maybe we'll we'll all look at this if I want to put this in. I had to wash my shorts in the sink and then all the paper towels were on the socks and the underpants. And then uh, I I. I, I get back in my car, like I, 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 like I, I had a battle. I just took a breath. Like <laughs> I got away with murder here, and so much paper towels at the bottom of that shit thing. And I, 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 I hate to, you know, my, I don't have it. I'll put it up here. But I sent my, my, uh, my manager a. You told him you shit your pants. I said, I, I said I had a little bit of a, of an issue. I, because, I got to be honest, and I've been waiting for this meeting, and. Uh, That's why you can never work here. Right. Uh, and then on the way back, not because you shit your pants, but because you have to be honest. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant because of shitting the pants. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but you, you lie a lot here. No, no. We're salesmen. Your father doesn't we, lie. We enhance right. things. Oh, you could walk by a thing. He's waiting on a customer, and he'll look at it and go, "Well, you know whose rug that is?" And they go, "No." And he goes, "That's a RG." They go in our chair, oh, a, a right. Rick Glassman, yeah. original. He used to do that with Matt Vangel. Yeah, he did it with everybody. He does it with everybody. I do it with Jack Rosen. Jack Rosen. Jack Rosen. Yeah, but that's that's. There's a difference between lying and joking. Lying is 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 trying to deceive someone for some for, for some reason, right. but a joke. So I right. We saying, don't deceive anybody. We give every. We have a square. F- Square deal, deal on every, every square, square yard. yard. <laughs> but it's calling something a Rick Glassman or a, a Don Dramenko. It's, it's, the best. it's not it's gonna busting it's, balls in the middle of a day that's very stressful. It's but great. would you ever yeah. go to a rug that was actually a whatever John Jaminko, if you guys even carried those, and tell somebody that it was something that they would be interested in, like this is a Louis Vuitton or sure. something? You would do that? Oh yeah. Could I see a scene? Could I see how that would happen? <laughs> Can you see how it would happen? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I didn't follow the question. Uh, well, Dad, you're you're the customer and he and he's gonna lie to you. He doesn't lie. Mm-hmm. It doesn't lie. As a matter of fact, he's very honest. He tells people, A, he tells people what they want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and B, he's very honest. He tells people what carpets perform. Mm-hmm. He tells them not to buy because it's white. We say never buy white Why carpet. Why do you carry it? Because people because still buy it. Because it's my largest selling color, by far. Then why do you tell people not to All get it? All young couples buy white carpet. Yes, and he and tells everyone of them not to. one kid or two kids, they come in three years later and go, you, you bald-headed asshole, told me not to buy white carpet, but I had to buy white carpet, and now I need to get black carpet. Right. <laughs> Who is white carpet best suited for? Uh, people that don't walk on it. <laughs> so I could have white carpet. <laughs> yes. Basically, my wife came to me after 20 years of dark burgundy in the closet and said, I want soft yellow. I said, no fucking way. It shows everything. Who do you she think goes, won that argument? <laughs> I own a carpet store. I want to put it in. And I said, no, you're not doing it. Now, I never say no to my wife. And I said, no, I'm going to pick it out. She came in and worked with one of my salespeople, called my installers, had her carpet put in. It is right. beautiful, but I can't even walk out. I realized something earlier that I'd like to talk about, and I hate to throw Dad under the bus here, but if, dad's, first. if dad's buying your socks at 100 bucks a pop. Uh-huh. Mark doesn't, first of all, he, he's the most successful guy I know, and he has no computer and no email address. Look at all the desks here, all the cameras. Everybody's got computers. Those girls have two monitors each. He has no computer to, and what are no the, email. What are the $100 socks? The reason that is is we shop a lot online, and he doesn't have the capability of doing that. So he comes over to my computer, and we pick out stuff. Tell and, me about a $100 well, sock. Well, he buys the nicest stuff. I, I bought got a whole, I don't know. Was it a whole, Louis Vuitton? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. At one time, no. first of all, without me, he dresses like a schlump, okay? With he looks me, good now. He does. Good well, socks. Yeah. W- would you say without you, he Bombas. might wear sweatpants to work? No. No. I would he doesn't wear, wear no. no. But I he wear them at home every night. He, yes, he wears them at home every night to right. work. So do the he, people who are watching the commercial. Yes, <laughs> and I get out of these pants and into my sweatpants in less than 35 seconds flat. We'll cut to a clip. <laughs> I really want to try something with you guys. 
and it's it's a little out of all of our comfort zones but it's something that I think would be a cool thing to have right now in this where the way the country is the way it is we're in a shithole man and we can't get out fast enough right and uh, I want to try and just show people that it doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, or as long as you want to too, you know? <laughs> and if you're not, we need to start seeing them. At, we, need to st we need to do better. I need you to hire two more women, right? And I We need have more women working here than men. And do the women get paid more or yes. less? More. Yeah, some make a more. Woman is, some our make woman less. is our top salesperson. She gets the most commission. You hear that, America? I'm in the I'm in Ohio. That's it doesn't right. it doesn't get more red than that. And here we are, a couple of guys, a triple of guys, shooting yeah. the shit, talking about shit, talking about gambling and booze. Right? <laughs> he's from blah blah blah, and he's from gada gada gada. We're all different. Yet we could sit in here and look look at you all, look at your cameras. And say this, say this at the same time with me. Say at the same time, we, we, our wo woman is a top salesman and some of them get paid more. One, two, three. Women, women are the top, top salesmen and, and some, some of them get, get paid more. 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 <laughs> Very good. But all jokes aside, it would be boring. So we have to have some jokes. Yes. But I do want to be serious here for a minute. And I want to say that I don't look at myself as... as a Jewish kid born from Steve and Debbie, and this is going to be corny, I look at myself as an American. And I love sports. We all do. I love basketball. We all want to root for a team, and, and, and we, we take it this for granted. We treat the left and the right like teams, like, oh, I hate, I hate them. Kevin Garnett's great. Why do you not like him? Because he's a Celtic. But he's, he's a guy. He's yeah, an American. He's Celtic. Let, let me ask you something. Go ahead. All right. What is your first memory as a child of Mark Ween? Uh, that's why I need a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> but in a second, I want us to come together and be able to sincerely, Dad, this is we're ready for you now. I have to pee. Please, please, just pee after this. Pee after this. This is important. If we can sincerely and don't try to go up with each other, try to do it as a team, as an Americans, just sing the national anthem. Oh, say. Wait, stop, stop, hold on. Go, I have to pee. You go pee. Okay. All right, we'll do it when you get back. We'll work on it. We'll practice. Mark, you know the song? The National Anthem? Yeah. yeah I could follow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I think maybe I'll come in with, oh, say, and then you could harmonize with me. You go, can you see? Yeah, I'm going to fuck try this, this up. Just try it. Okay. Oh, oh say, can, can you, you see? see? All right, why don't you sing the harmony and I'll, I'll excuse me the the melody and I'll sing the harmony. I'll try to let's bring. I started too high for that. Let's bring it down to a D sharp minor or D sharp. <laughs> Just bring it down. Start it up and let oh, me show you. Say, can, can you see? You see by the dawn early light. All right, and then I don't know the whole words. <laughs> Nobody knows follow. the whole words. <laughs> You, you, you just see how long you could go and see how well you could fake it <laughs> once you don't know. I want to do that with Dad. Let's try one now in case he doesn't want to. Let's see how long we could go. Can I get more stone than I am? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> try as hard as you can. And harmonize when you're able. Sure. Oh, oh say can, Too high. Oh, oh, say can you see, see <laughs> by the dawn's, dawn's early Light. Yes. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes you are, and, and bright stars through the perilous fight, and the rack hearts we watch. watch we're so gallantly streaming. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or the or the land of the free.
and the oh. ho. Oh, here's what I want to do. And the ho. And you do your ho. ho. All right. And the ho. 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 Of the. And then you got to go. No, no, no. And when I point to you, you go the, the. Okay, okay. Okay, maybe you should go because you should be the deepest. But I like that. So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> you get it. And the home of the, the okay. okay. And the home, home of, the, of the no, just the not okay, of the okay. Okay. And then brave, 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 brave. Okay. Brave. So just the word. And the home. And the home. No, dad, 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 dad. You're just saying home. <laughs> when I say, when I point to you, just say the last word that I said. Okay. 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 <laughs> and the home. home. <laughs> of the. the... No, Mark, Mark, wait until I point to you. Okay. And you too. Okay. Here it is. This is <laughs> yeah. it. We got it. Okay. We got it. We got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And the home, home of the, the brave. That was good. Okay, that was only four or five takes. <laughs> that's not bad. It's four or five tokes. Yes, that's what did it. Oh, man, no, but funny. what do you guys think about what's? And, and let me take. Let me Go take. back to your first memory of Mark Ween. <sighs> I don't. I don't know. My bar mitzvah. Yeah. No, it's at right. the. Uh, <laughs> when you were I remember going choked over. to death at the uh, oh, oh, oh were you at the Coliseum? Yes, for the car for the, thing. Yes, for the, uh, uh, yes. Starburst. It, it was no. the, uh, the monster pool, monster pool, monster monster pool. Right. truck. Yeah, right. Yeah, Again. Ryan, Matt, you and Matt right. were there. Four of us and me and Mark. Right. I'll never forget that. I Six of the only Jews in the place. <laughs> Right. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember I was eating Starburst and, and there was, was some packed. exciting stuff going on and I'm yeah. banging you and you're like, I know, I know. And it <laughs> took like 20 seconds where we finally look over and I'm choking on a Starburst yes. and you gave me the not, Heimlich. No, no, yeah, no. Too. Not a Starburst. At least 7-Eleven <laughs> Starburst. You had the wad oh. the size of a baseball. We punched it out and it hit me in the chest. I'll never forget. And I go... Oh fuck! He could have killed himself. Yes. That stuff was like cement in your throat, and you <laughs> and you were pulling back. Oh yeah, I know it's cool. It's yeah, cool. right. Oh my god! That Rick. was how old were you? Six, seven, six, seven, or seven. Right. Yeah. I remember going to your house and being. I I didn't disagree. I just didn't understand why houses don't have microwaves. But I don't know what that age was. It's still it, you come to his house. He still has no microwave. I don't have a microwave either. Don't Ryan, use a microwave. Ryan, Mark's wife My doesn't wife, believe in yeah. microwaves or ice machines. Now, when you say you don't believe in, it makes it sound like you're denying its reality. Isn't it more that no, no, she doesn't she, believe in using? Yes. She yes. doesn't give a fuck, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> She's got a lot of shit that she does that nobody else would do. Right. We had five kids and she, flew separately for 20 years to Hawaii, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Germany, Australia, twice New Zealand once. Why flying separately? Because we had five kids. So if the plane went down, she one of us kid. would live. Oh, right. kind of like like the vice president and the president. Yes. yes. Or should yes. I say yes. uh, the president-elect yes. okay. and then the president Dingleberry. <laughs> he, <laughs> no, he, did, he did that for 20 years. You imagine landing in Hawaii and she goes, yeah, my plane's uh, not going to be until tomorrow. I don't know where the fuck to go. She's not with me. I don't know the whole. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Well, Doesn't idea. matter what I think. Right. And by that the way, what she she's thinks. a remarkable woman. Okay. She's a remarkable. She raised woman. five sons, which she had very little to do with, except teaching them all how to smoke, drink, and gamble. Not so much drink. They learned to drink on their own. We don't drink too yeah, much. They drink brown stuff. Well, <laughs> are you talking about? They drink. Poop? Bourbon and scotch. Bourbon, scotch, brown stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. the weather yes. outside. You can't talk about it. Yes. <laughs> and the snow. Let's go one word at a time. See how long. I don't know do that this. song. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. What Christmas song do you know? How about this? What? How about? How about this? Faster than speed and bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman. Yes, Superman. <laughs> Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who disguises Clark Kent, a mild matter reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, <laughs> fights a never ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. And that's the truth. 
The problem is he always wanted to be Clark Kent. Yes. But he was more like Jimmy Olsen. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> oh, you know what I thought you were going to say, which would have been a really sweet thing to say to a friend? What's that? You know, Mark, and this is maybe going to sound a little corny, but you've always falsely looked at yourself as Clark Kent. I don't know, really, you're Superman. <laughs> that would have been nice, but Listen, not true. But one more, one more story that I got to tell, okay? Mom and I, this is... My me, mom or yes, yours? your mom. Well, how am I going to know that? Okay, my wife, your mom, and I were on So a, take my mom, Yes, for example. Please. Oh. We were on a cruise. This Evan is, Costello. This is <laughs> 19, I don't know, 1990, 1991, and... Uh, they played games on cruises and everything, so they had a big thing, a thousand people, and they had a dating game or a newlywed game, and they had somebody that was married two or three years, somebody that was married 10 years, and somebody that was married 20 years, and mom and I came on as the one that were married 20 years, and I don't know if you remember the format about the newlywed game, but they asked a bunch of five and 10-point questions early, and then the last question's a 50-pointer. You get that, and you're right. So With you're the, saying the first couple of questions are a little more simple, but it really comes down to but final then the, jeopardy. The, who's in the thing, and who went in the back? So you can't hear each other. Right. I'm in the back. They're asking Debbie the questions. And Steve right. can't hear. Okay. The right. answer's obviously. So the, the bonus question was, if you're... Wait, wait, hold on. I want just okay. for people at home. Say so the bonus question was, and we'll put in a sound effect, and then say it. Okay. If you're deserted on a desert island... Wait, no, I say the bonus the question was. The bonus question was... If no, no, no. I need you to say the bonus question was... Gotcha. Yeah. The bonus question was... And we're back. No, 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 no. Listen. I, I th picture in your head that there's a drum roll. The bonus question was... Gotcha. And then you're gotcha. going to go like this on the cymbal hit. Gotcha. The bonus question was... Boom. I forgot what the question... <laughs> if you were on a deserted island. Uh, okay, right, right, right. Okay. All right. The bonus question was... If you were on a desert... <laughs> can I just tell the fucking question? Deserted island. Right. If you're on a deserted island... And you can only have one person there on that deserted island. Who would it be? And all the other women are the going. The first guy. No, the first guy comes up and says, "Right, says, Christy Brinkley." Right. They're all and right, right. And the next guy says, "Farrah Fawcett." Both of them are okay, wrong. Okay, they're both guessing what the wife would say. Right. So Steve looks at Debbie and says, "Mark Wayne." <laughs> she goes. She took up her card, Mark Wayne, <laughs> <laughs> and we won the contest. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I played a game like that uh, with, with uh, a good friend of mine, Brent Morin. Shout out to Brent Morin. We'll cut to a clip. Rick, what's the grossest thing you've ever caught Brent doing? Oh. Uh, oh. 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 Well, I, to say catch it implies that he didn't tell me to come in. <laughs> um, I guess the grossest thing on paper uh -huh. would just to be... <laughs> what are you going to say? Just him... I mean, I've been in there... Are you kidding there. me? We do this... I've been taking a poo. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, but it's Finally. often. That's uh, Brent Morin. You can check him out at Brent Morin. Uh... Brent Morin. All right. All right. I'm Mark's got to go home and feed five kids. Well, actually, oh, none wait. of them live at home yet. Um, oh, well, that's just a completely well, no, different I, thing. Wrong. Spencer and Tyler are both home. Shout out to Spencer and Tyler. And I think. Uh, <laughs> Miles. Matt is the only son we haven't shot out right. yet. I really want to just try, because there was a f connection I felt with you guys with the National Anthem, and, and let's not make everything so like political and polarizing. Everyone loves, whether you're Jewish or, or um, what's the other one? Italian. That uh, you could still, everyone enjoys Christmas time. And is, what is, there's got to be a, a, a classic Christmas. You don't know, oh, the weather outside is frightful. I know, Jingle Bells. Uh, there's uh, something, you know, do you know... Um, uh, I know my bar mitzvah part. I know when uh, Mariah Carey sings uh, Christmas carols. My wife plays them all the time. <laughs> I could go on with that. I could kind of catch up, but I don't know any you of the gotta, words. It's kind of like the national anthem. <laughs> yeah. not, none of the words. I was, I was one step behind you guys, and I pulled it it's off. It's kind of like we're, when we're in temple, and they go, please rise and read Each other's prayer. sentences. And, and, uh. and you open, and, and you open and the book, open the and book, my kids and you go, have all been bar mitzvah and stuff. Like, right. I could give a fuck. Okay? <laughs> They're reading all the shit. Oh, you know going, a couple of words here and right, there. Right, You go, la reine de la It's the one when people are dead. like mumble and move your lips. So everybody thinks you're reading the prayer. Right. Um, could you do? Let us know with me. 
and can we go one word at a time? I just want to try this. Uh, 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 okay, Rick. Whatever Thanks, you Mark. want to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, you're reading this, Rick, yes, but we're still going. Yes, good those. <laughs> <laughs> that one we all know. Oh. The weather out there is frightful. <laughs> That's all just I one can word at fight time. for. <laughs> <laughs> the weather out there is... The weather outside. <laughs> the weather over there. Is All right, fuck it. I, I thought, right. you know, you take swings The only swings time we high. care no, about the weather need, is need, we have to know track conditions. You need Teddy. Yeah. Go ahead. Desperado. Well, wait for the... Well, I can't do Desperado. <laughs> so uh, I had a fun time with you boys. Uh, the setup felt like... It took a while to break it down. I feel like we're going to have to sleep here. I, I, I'll be honest. There's so many things. I don't know if any of us is in focus during any of this entire podcast. But I had a great time. And it was a great podcast. Mark's a great storyteller. Thanks, Ricky. This was fun. Mark. Mark? Mark. 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 What? Looks like you learned the rules of the game. Yeah, he knows good. how to take your shoes off. <laughs> All right, <laughs> prove it. Part of the Marshall Carpet series. Um, I'm wearing slippers. Uh, so it's easy. I want to. Uh, All birds. I want to showcase a couple All pieces birds. of merchandise. Mark, as a, as a good salesman that you are, and Dad, as a good salesman that you are, maybe you guys could tag team and sell to to the audience. Mark, you'll look into your camera. Dad, you'll look into your camera during this. We'll split screen it, and you could sell them on the Scoot Do theme song shirt. And the I'm not passed at the comedy store hoodie and T-shirt. You could take the lead because you know the stuff more and help yeah. him out. I'll, I'll leave Scoop Doo to Mark because I don't know if he knows what don't pass, not pass at the comedy store means. It's just selling the shirt. You don't have to tell the whole story. But well, then I'll sell this shirt. Look into your camera. Mark, you look into your sell the shirts. Scoop Doo, bodity do. Besides me saying it in my sleep all night long because I own this <laughs> shirt and now I know how to read it. It's the softest shirt I've ever bought. Really? Not on, yes, it oh. feels wonderful. <laughs> oh, okay. Not only that, hunter green. Mm. That's the color of the year this year. It's a soft emerald. It's not hunter. Yeah. You should know that yeah. being yeah. in the You are the color business. maven. Yes. At any rate, green yes. is hot. Will you give me that? Yes, it is. My <laughs> okay. son just bought a green Green Audi. car, a beautiful right. and One day he'll get a job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Little so not fucker. only is the shirt comfortable, it's right on mark. And it's out of bounds. <laughs> Scoop do, body do, buy it at rickglassman.com. And bonus word, poop. <laughs> no, no, boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah, boobs. Promo boobs. code. Promo code. Promo code boobs. boobs. For, Mark, you could tell them that. Uh, promo code boobs for 10% off. But, Dad, also sell another hoodie. You want me to sell the hoodie? Yeah. Now? But, Mark, chime in. Do some of the color. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that blah, 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 you know, and, and whenever you feel right. like it. By the way, you know, you could use promo code boobs for 10% off. And you'll, you'll, you'll yeah, sell. Yeah, I'll fuck it up. Mark is not a fan of hoodies. Hmm. He prefers a regular fleece sweatshirt. I, on the other hand, love hoodies, which makes me love the Not Pass at the Comedy Store hoodie. It's soft. And it's got a nice You can buy that cord. at Rick Glassman's website for 10% off. Wait, why? No, why'd you cut him off? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let him get this. You're burying the lead here. Which, and by the way, we're great when we double team a, a, a client, by the are way. Are you guys allowed to do that anymore? Oh, or you've been me too. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> we do it. When we got people that need the help. Assholes. Sorry. The right. assholes. The assholes. Well, how could you double team an asshole? asshole? They know it all. We love it. Right. We're just bouncing back and forth, and that drives them crazy because they have to oh, know more than anybody. Character traits. Right. Right. Customers right. that are assholes. Right. Very wealthy, want to know everything, think they know everything. And Often they don't know shit. Oftentimes, Mark compares the retail profession to the same thing as the oldest profession in the world, which is prostitution. Yeah, we're Be whores. We're whores because we can not like someone personally or not like what they stand for. Look at... Not to get too political on your podcast, but he's not a Democrat, but he's definitely anti-Trump, as am I. But if somebody comes in this store wearing I love Donald Trump T-shirts and wants to buy a $3,000 rug, he's going to get great service from me oh, because, yeah. because I'm a whore. Yeah, Do I you look, have a uh, Make America Great Again hat again for when you see someone like that walk oh, in? Oh, I got a MAGA hat and a Democrat <laughs> hat. Yes, but yes, in the meantime, right. <laughs> I'll come over and the guy will come up to me and go, 
can you believe it? He goes, Trump's going to win this by 10 points. I go, I can only hope so. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Next thing I know is the motherfucker's texting me Trump stuff on my phone. <laughs> 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 I don't know how he got He called here. He talked somebody into getting my phone. He's texting me Trump stuff for a year now. When he lost, I think he blew his brains out. <laughs> but I took his money, and I was a Trump guy in front of him every time. Sell my sweatshirt, and then we're going to edit it. Okay. Not pass at the comedy store. Great slogan because the comedy store did not pass Ricky, who's the funniest guy in the world. Of course, well, I'm a little biased. But also, uh, uh, I would like to say that not being passed at the comedy store it isn't isn't a punishment. It isn't a, a lack of accomplishment. It's it's a way of life. And there's a lot of us, whether it not be I, allowed into get into your fraternity or not be invited to the prom or, or you're not able to, maybe there's something where you're not accepted in your family Richard, or your religion. Richard? We've all... I couldn't agree with you more enough. However, there's one person that we know very well that would not agree with that. What, what that part? That takes it very personal that the comedy store has not passed you. Absolutely. I'm sure there's, there's brilliant you know comedians what? that haven't if, been passed if, by the if, comedy store. If we had to write it down. I could write it down. Yes. We'll say it at three. <laughs> one, two, three. Alfonso Romero. <laughs> Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Mom. yeah. No question, mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those motherfuckers. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't pass my son. What the fuck are they thinking about? What is Grandma Gloria like? Oh, she's a Democrat from way back. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Grandma yeah. Gloria, yes. I can only imagine what she's got to say about Trump. Right. We'll cut to a clip. Come on, let's go. All right, I'm not watching, Ricky, and I'm not going to look. Hey, oh, shut up. Put the microphone down. That's goddamn ridiculous. For Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, watching a game with him is like going through torture. I swear to God, he does everything he knows I don't like. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, so not being passed at the comedy store, it's it's uh, to me, it's it, it it embodies confidence and embodies acceptance that like I'm not gonna let not being accepted somewhere, blah blah blah, yada yada. So this isn't just for comedians. This isn't just for women. This is also for guys. Is there a promo code if I buy that, Mark? 10% off at Rick's website, ricky.com. <laughs> <laughs> What's the promo code, putz? Promo code? If I knew what that was, I'd tell you. Boobs. I say, boobs, boobs. Boobs. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what boobs are? I was going to say 5421. Uh, I was going to say 8008. <laughs> you, have to, you have to bleep out the numbers he just said. Yeah, because sure. those are the numbers of everything I own in the world. <laughs> okay. Everything I own. Everyone he just gave his universal my, password right, out. Right. You, can, you can get in my checking accounts, my savings accounts. Well, Ricky, now, I have an enlarged prostate. I know. Dad. Well, I have to pee again, so okay. I'm, I'm signing off. Thank you very much, Steven, Mark. Appreciate I love you. It. I'm love signing you. off. Ricky, right. you're the best. Thanks, man. You are the best. So Thank you for tuning in to right. Take Your Shoes Off. I'm Rick Glassman. And you've been ricked. <laughs> <laughs> Scoot doo, blabbery blue. Scoot dee, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>